very soon. Hi. You know, I tell him what time to go on, and he's like, okay, I'm ready. And then here he is, dicking around. Oh, come on. You know. I'm Mr. Dick around. What's the matter? What's going on? Nothing. I'm sitting in my chair. If you spill anything over here, you're going to be in trouble. Chair. That's all I got. Is that right? What? I just washed that, and you just literally threw it on the ground. I'm sorry. I was poking me in the back. I'm sorry. What is it? What is it? I'm oh, sorry. What's going on, folks? Yeah, we have glass all fogged up. How you doing out there, Matt McCauley? What's up, Matt McCall? Matt McCall, Matt in Arizona, Hi, baby. Matt. That's right. Hi, Matt. That's right, Big Max. All up in here. Oh yeah, this is the shirt. Hey, let me see that sticker over there, babe, no. please. So uh, Brian Doris, who's a big supporter of the channel for quite a long time. Salute to the smiley. Thank you, Zach. His brother has a t-shirt company. That's a, that's a, that's a, okay. that's a shirt co. Yeah. That's it. So it's 928 Shirt Co. Arizona made. <gasps> Check them out. I don't have the website. Otherwise, I'd post it. But I'm sure if you go 928 Shirt Co., there it is. JP said, boss lady, Adrian, love you too, Big Max, brother. Oh uh, yeah. Can you believe this guy right here is only seven weeks old? Let's see this dude. We call him Big Boy. Yeah, this big boy. Yeah, big boy. <laughs> seven week old puppy. Hey, look, you're famous. Amber had babies. They know. Remember we posted it on the site. Yeah. Hi JP. Hi Brian. Hey Hot Rod. Hi, my brother, Big Mex. Skyler, what's up? Oh, yeah, Brian a, Wood, what's up? He's a big boy. Hot Rod's on? Yeah. Yeah, Hot Rod, what's up, brother? Respects from Meth Desto. Right back to you, brother. Look at this dog. He is the cutest thing ever, oh, but he's God. a big, he's big. He's a big boy. He's the biggest one out of the lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. So right now we have 11 dogs with yeah. these guys. All right, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's a cool-ass dog. <laughs> That's right, Big Max. Uh, what's up, Brian? How you doing, brother? Good evening, Aaron Potter. Good evening, Jason. Minneapolis checking in. What's up? It's been a while. Uh, Big Max, what's up, brother? You got hot respect coming from Hot Rod. Joe Allegra, what's happening, brother? Good to see you too. That's a good looking pooch, man, ain't he? We got seven of them puppies and then our other four dogs, so it's crazy. Um, you know. <laughs> uh Smiley's compound. That's right. That's what it the is. Puppies have taken over the living room, so we got no living room. I was gonna take a picture <laughs> of what my husband did. Um, but we have a dog gate, so our dog gate is uh you know it was loose dog skip yeah now whatever so oh, i yeah. come home yeah he literally nailed the gate i screwed it well whatever into the back of our couch yeah yes he did so we got the couch at an angle okay i don't think all that's necessary just going into the living room so i put the the dog gate kind of what? The moral what? of the story is, is that you screwed shit into the back of our couch. Thank you. Thank you, Red Ass. I've been 10 dogs in my house for years. A lot of them got old and died, but I still have quite Aww, a few. that's that's awesome. That's right, I wish Matt, we yeah. could keep them all. I wish we could, but. Yeah, we can't keep them all, but we will find good homes for them. Love to see you on here, bro. That's right, Big Max. Look at that photo. Yeah. Zach, what's up? Watch, look at, look at that. Look at Big Max's from Cocoa. Oh, that's yeah. neat. At the birthday party. At my birthday party. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been working my ass off. You know, I get up at three in the morning 
and drive and work. Uh, how's the bike? The bike's good. Um, it's a long day, so I haven't been on for a while. But we cracked a milestone, and, uh, you know, we were chatting like, man, we got to go on and just thank everybody for getting us where we're at. Um, you know, i got to apologize for not going live for quite a while. But, you know, getting up in the morning, driving to work, work, come back, it's like, that's like 15 hours. So Our milestone was we hit 25,000. Yeah. So thank yeah, I'm you getting, guys. I'm getting there. So much. So, that's why I haven't been going live, but, um, you know, we got people that have been supporting us for, from day one and, uh, you know, it's just amazing. Uh, let's see. Hell yeah. Hot Rod's been there forever. Yeah. 3M is super. I was telling you, been in YouTube. <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, the economy's kind of fucked. It's rough, man. You know, we got a house. We got to pay bills. And, you know, I'm, I'm uh, Robert, what's up? That's right, brother. Um, uh, let's see. Thank you. So we got 25,000 subs now. And that, that just, uh, you know. Wait, Jay, what's up? Jay Tat, what's up? Yeah, Big Max has been around since day one. A lot of guys have been around from day one. The guys who watched us on 23 and 1 came over to our channel, and a lot of guys, uh, yeah, bills don't stop. That's for damn sure. Jay, thanks for tuning in from Australia. Um, you know, it's an amazing thing, man. You guys have been with us. Uh, we used to go live all the time. Yeah, JP, member for 24 months. Look at that shit. Yeah, hard to family. That's right, brother. Yeah, day one or. Yeah, yeah, there's another one. Day one or Big Mex, and we've seen Big Mex quite a few times. We're a fan, yeah, we're effing deep. <laughs> I've seen Hot Rod at, the, at one of his events. You know, I've met a few people on the channel, so uh, they motherfucking one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you know, I look forward to continue to meet people from the channel. Um, it's just a gas mask. What's up? Jason was here last week. Yeah, we had Jason Menifee at our house last week. Uh, Jason Menifee flew down to Georgia, I think, and picked up a jet boat motor for his boat. That's right, brother. That's Big Will's been there from day one. We've been there long. Yeah, man, don't even get me. There's from Matthew. A pellet, from a pellet stove to the... <laughs> I'm videos on Facebook because I regularly have vids about you in the news feed. Even a lot of your old vids and not vids from my channel. Wow, that's badass. Matthew's been around forever. Uh, Will's been around forever. It's just. Uh, we wouldn't be in Arizona right now if it wasn't for a lot of the people that are on here right now. Yeah. For real. I'm going to tell you something, man. Guys from this channel helped us out so much. Thank you, Gas Mask. I mean, beyond what words can say. I mean, uh, we're very grateful. And, uh, I mean, we made some really good friends and family out of this. Well, yeah, there you go. Big Whack. Look at Big Whack. Red Diamond. What you think about the red? Uh, red Heifer. That has to do with, like, the sacrifice of the Red Heifer and the new temple over there and all that stuff. We can talk about that. This in a bit. is the only thing I miss about COVID is when I mean those were some super fun yeah. uh, lives for sure. Yeah, the twenty hour conversations with Whack on the phone. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, during COVID, our channel really took off. Uh, uh, thank you, Will. We love you too, brother. Will, yeah. you have been on my mind a lot. I meant that. Mitch and I were just talking about that tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Whack. What's up, brother? So, you know, I mean, like I used to go to work when I worked for Forensic Clean and drive around a truck all day picking up trash bags for uh, 25 bucks an hour. And Whack would call me and Nick would call me. I'd talk to them guys for hours. I'd, I'd do my whole shift on the headset talking to Whack or talking to Mick. Or I'd do like two or three hours talking to Whack and do like two or three hours talking to Mick. And, uh, you know, just, uh, there you go. 
good people come from all around and for some reason people have gathered here robert on our channel and we go to wills for a barbecue yeah, yeah. you know and uh, it, that's no exaggeration we would not be in this house in arizona right now for people that helped us move yeah everything. if it wasn't for this channel and the people that we met through this channel that's outright and i can't really get into all the details of but just trust and believe we'd still be sitting our ass in Placerville. Well, maybe not, but we wouldn't be in this house. And that's a fact, you know, it's a, uh, it's a righteous family. And we, we, we're just grateful. And to hit uh, 25,000 subs blows my mind. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Oh, wow, man. Thank you, Matthew. And it, you know what? The feelings likewise, brother, for real. Um, you got no idea, man. Um, <laughs> you know, you made statements about, you know, like I, that I did 38 years in prison. People, uh, you know, and, and people are like, you know, how inhumane that is and all that shit. And, you know, and, and a lot of people are saying, you know, I don't know how you did it. I did it one day at a time, you know, and it's the same way I'm living out here now, but, <clears throat> you know, we can get into it in a bit, but, uh, been some epic times on our Saturday night lives. Yeah. We got to do that again sometime. Uh, you know, prison in California, I was talking to my friend that lives about two miles from us out here and, uh, today and, uh, you know, some of the events that he went through, he went to prison before me, like around 73, 74. Uh, he was in Tracy with, uh, you know, baseball bat incident. And, you know, I've, we've been friends for 40 years, man. And, uh, you know, thank you, Big Max. And we were talking today about some of the stuff he went through in Tracy. And, and uh, you know, a lot of it is, is our own doing. You know, prisoners treat each other like shit sometimes, but staff encourage it. And staff manipulate inmates. Um, you know, that's right. Uh, you know, they manipulate the races, you know, and I think a lot of that's kind of not the way it used to be. Prison's not the way it used to be. Um, it was life or death shit. And, and, you know, staff instigated a lot of that shit. Staff would Staff would stack the decks against a whole race of people. Um, you know, I was talking to him and he was in Tracy uh, at one point. Um, it was very racial problems, a lot of racial problems at the time. And, and, he, and he told me a story about, um, you know, that they had an incident between the blacks and the whites. And uh, after that, Los Angeles County, every busload that came from Los Angeles County to Tracy prison was nothing but blacks. And uh, one day, on the yard, all the whites went to the yard and refused to leave the yard. They're like, hey, fuck you, we're not going, we're not leaving the yard. Go suit up and take us off the fucking yard. There was 180 white dudes in the whole prison. Um, uh, hey, my dude, right there, that's okay. You know, so staff instigated, that's a good point to bring up the staff were actually doing that. Yeah, I mean, why would you bring busload after busload after busload of black inmates into the prison and no whites, no Mexicans, no whites? Why would you do that? You know, they're coordinating uh, with the county. You know, state and county are coordinating with each other, you know, the sheriff's department and the CDC and, uh, you know, the reception centers to just flood the prisons with a certain race of people. What's up, Joe? <laughs> Um, because they know that it's going to lead to problems. And, uh, but the problems led to people dying and people getting hurt, you know, stories about guys getting stabbed on the day they're supposed to go home. Uh, you know, that's that a lot of that was instigated by staff. Um, you know, back then staff got paid about $18,000 a year. Um, and they loved it. They loved it when inmates were stabbing each other. I had a cop in San Quentin tell me once in the hallway, when you guys stop stabbing each other, I'm going to quit. And uh, Lex, what's up? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, I would say probably 80% of the problems in prison are orchestrated or what's up, Big Cinco? 
you know, they're orchestrated and coordinated by staff. Um, yeah, free entertainment. You know, they watch each other stab, watch guys stab each other, hurt each other. Uh, they get to shoot them. Back then, they had many 14s and shotguns and shit. And uh, except for Folsom, all they had was, was bullets. But, uh, uh, you know, Connor Lewis, what's up? Um, you know, uh, but it also was job security. It was also overtime. Uh, you know, the prison was locked down for six months and then they would slowly unlock it, you know, stuff like that. It's overtime. Oh, man, I'll have to. It's uh, Mitch at hardintentions.com. We're great. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I mean, that that, that was a, a time when the prison system uh had no eyes on it. Uh, had no eyes on it from the public. Um, people that were crying about, uh, yep, yep. Um, people that were crying about prison uh, reform and uh, you know all this other stuff. They were looked at as radicals and, and subversives, and you know, you know what I'm saying. It was just like. But now, you know, California, they've, they've kind of gained with the liberal establishment. I think that I think they've gone too far personally with a lot of shit, um, you know, like now yeah, looting and also the crap. But the bottom line was nobody paid attention because they didn't give a fuck. We were criminal pieces of shit that belonged to prison and we killed each other. Big deal. That just meant that we didn't have to come back to, to their society, you know. Um, it's a little different now, but guys that survived through that era, like the era before me um, or the era that I came into, you know, um, you know, it, man, <laughs> uh, I'm some pics of my new puppy. <laughs> That's right, Lex. Um, it was, uh, it was brutal, man. It was a brutal time. And I, I think, uh, Corcoran probably started the end of it because they built a lot of new prisons. They had two big facilities of shoe units. Uh, uh, people don't want to run this for digits. Yeah, they don't. But um, Logan, what's up? Do the crime. Do the That's a thing, you know. Do the do your. I'll get back to that, Matthew. But yeah, do the crime. Uh, do the time. But. Uh, you know, don't be abused by staff. You know, don't put a white dude in a day room with, uh, you know, 12 or 13 Northern Mexicans that are gang members that are known to kill white dudes and, uh, and, and lock them in and then look through the windows and wait and see what happens. You know, I mean, that, that's the kind of, don't put like, uh, don't put uh, a white dude uh, uh, in a prison gang out on the yard in the shoe unit in Corcoran uh, with five black prison gang members and then stand at the gun port and wait until something happens and then shoot people, right? And then shoot the white dude because you don't like him. And even though he's being victimized by four or five other guys, they orchestrated that shit. Yeah, do the time, but don't be brutalized by staff and don't be manipulated by staff, you know? Uh, yeah, you can give a dude 25 line for a piece of pizza. Yeah, it needs to be a balance, man. And there are guys that died in prison that got struck out for misdemeanor crimes, stealing a pair of Levi's, you know, and get 25 to life and die in prison, you know, or get stabbed up in a riot or whatever. Um, you know, here's the thing, like, uh, when they started the depopulation of California prison due to uh, federal courts orders, <clears throat> they started letting out the nonviolent criminals and they would come right back. The population decreased because they, they were told by the federal courts to start letting out lifers um, and people with violent crimes. And we, we don't go back. Um, guys that do a lot of time, guys that uh, most guys in prison for murder, um, it's a one time deal. Unless the guy's a psychopath and he just likes hurting people. Um, most guys in prison for violent crimes don't go back. 
Um, you know, Nacho Daddy. <laughs> Hector Bravo just said two inmates were killed this week at CDC. Didn't release that information at all. They're trying to change their image, I guess. Yeah, they don't. They don't want you to know. Gavin or Newsom, I think Gavin Newsom's a fucking idiot, and I think you know so he should just uh, keep his fucking ass out of the politics of prison because he's a fucking moron. San Quentin is, uh, yeah, <laughs> Gavin Newsom's an idiot. But, you know, guys that do violent crimes, uh, usually they get out and they stay out. Guys that do knick-knack crimes usually go, hey, I only did two years, and they do the same shit until they get caught and go back. And then when they get struck out, they cried about it. And I would be on the yard like in Solid Dad. And then when I got down to level two and San Quentin and this and that, and even Donovan and Corbin guys like, oh, I'm a lifer. I'm like, well, we got a murder? No, I got struck out. I go, then you're not a lifer. You know, back the fuck up, man. You know, it's, it's, uh, uh, Bullhead City loves you. Thank you, Mikey. Two, two, two times. <laughs> Thank you. I love Bullhead City as well. I'm on, you actually 38 years, no way. How many years to justify when it was a spontaneous event and you had no intent for anyone to die? That's actually true. Um, uh, yeah, there's some pieces of shit on death row as well. Um, to me, it was a fight, and, you know, somebody uh, pushed it over the line. Um, let's see, can we level some of those actions as spontaneous event? That's my. Yeah, but here's the deal. Um, Real quick, like, uh, for the death row, not all being treated better than those fellas locked up down. That's true. But they're letting guys off death row now. They're going to do away with it. So they're going to have to go out to the main line. Some of them are going to PC yards. You know what I mean? That's right, Zach. Um, so California, I don't know how it is now. When I got busted, I had no idea. Um you know, I told you guys some point at one point, you know, I went in front of a juvenile court judge when I got arrested. I was 17. And uh, it turns out he, when he was a lawyer, my, he was my mom's boss, uh, Todd. <laughs> and I didn't make the connection, but he's now judge Todd. He offered me three years for assault with death, assault, you know, whatever, go to youth authority. And I was like, fuck that. I didn't kill that guy. I didn't do it. I want a fucking trial. You know, I was stupid. Um, I didn't know that he was, you know, giving me love. The lawyer couldn't say, hey, man, this guy's a friend of your mom's. He's giving you a deal. If you go to adult court, you're going to never get out. And all he, he didn't tell me that. So, <clears throat> you know, he knew what I was facing as an adult. Uh, what's up, Dago? Where's that clicker at? Where's the arrow? There, it's way over there. Let me bring it over there. Salute. There you go. Oh, yeah. Jamie Selby said hi, babe. Um, she might be outside having some fresh air. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't, I was ignorant to the criminal justice system, injustice system, right? Uh, and so I didn't stab the dude. I, I, to me, it was a fight. Um, somebody else got carried away, pushed it over line. Uh, they're still in prison. Um, you know, uh, I wasn't like Mr. Killer. I mean, if somebody would have been a threat to my existence, I might, you know, there's a, there's a line that you will cross, um, when you have to, but just to fight. That's why I grew up, man. Fighting, you know, fight, fight, fight. Big deal. You know, someone disrespects you, you beat their fucking ass and teach them a lesson. Um, there's no there's no lesson in killing someone because they're gone. What happens after they die on the other side? Who knows? You know, but um, yeah, you know. So the law in California was um, aiding and abetting carries the same amount of time as a crime. So you look at my criminal convictions; it says second degree murder. Um, you live low for no no fire camps. <laughs> uh, the disorders you had to deal with in there. You know, I did a lot of level four time because I was a fuck up. Um, but to be honest with you, the worst level four time I did was um, ended around when I went to Tracy. 
I went from New Folsom to Tracy. Uh, Jim boxing team. Or no, I didn't join any boxing. They didn't really have any boxing teams uh, in places when I was on main lines. They started doing away with that stuff. So the level four time I did, like in Corcoran and Lancaster, I went to Donovan for the uh, Category T program, which is therapy for lifers, you know. And when I got done, you know, I got I got in trouble for being on a family visit. Um, when I was supposed to. They sent me to Cork and I told my friend, man, I'm going back to level four, you know, fuck. I guess I had to, you know, pack a piece. And just guys knew how to pack knives in their property and all that bullshit. So he goes, don't trip, bro. I go, what do you mean? He goes, this, this is a level three. I go, yeah. He goes, look at all the lames on this yard. Cause that's when three strikes hit. He goes, look at all these lames on this yard. You've got a yard full of guys that have been doing their time on level ones and level twos. And now they're in level threes and they're also in level four. So he goes, you know, level four is not what it used to be. Um, it was still serious, but it was not like, you know, it used to be. And I think I'm going to do a video on that. Um, so I went to Corcoran. And I was like, it was a fucking joke, you know, to be honest with you. It was cool. Corcoran was cool. I liked it. And there were there was a lot of violence. What I liked about Corcoran is you had guys, cops from San Quentin and Folsom and Tracy and shit. Old school cops, they went there to open that prison and run that prison. So they ran it old school, you know. Um, good night, brother. Have a good time at Disneyland with Cinco. <laughs> uh, let's see. So um, Corcoran was pretty serious still. But, you know, there'd be a stab and they find out what race was involved. They let everybody else out and lock up that race. It was a good ride there when I was there, and but like you go to, you know, I went to Lancaster, and I was like, dude, it was just a fucking joke, you know. And they started the two-on-one removals and all this other shit. It was, just, you know, prison got really stupid. Uh, you know, most important lesson I learned, you know, is, um, uh, you know, your time in lot, your life, your time is the most valuable thing you got. I mean, time, you can't get back. I can't get back those 38 years. Um, so you can't, you, you know, don't take that chance. That's going to work. That's don't take a risk. That's going to cost you something you can never get back. And in my case, it, you know, I lost 38 years. I can never get back, <clears throat> you know, because I made a bad decision of associating with people with them. Um, that, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't have been associating with. But I made that choice, you know. Uh, so, let's see. Oh, wow. Friends outside. We used to take our daughter to friends outside. And she remembers it, the dogs and the playground and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's a lesson I learned is, you know, make your decisions. Uh, wisely i mean you don't have to be selfish and greedy and all that shit but when you make a decision about who you're going to associate with uh be selfish you know think about yourself you know what kind of person is this is this a person that's that is gonna be uh just willy-nilly just do things that might you know throw their own lives away and maybe drag you down with them i mean it's pretty pretty serious man people one person at the drop of the hat could cost you your life um and it's you know choose your friends wisely you know value your time on this planet because we don't know what happens once we're not on this planet you know i mean i have my own beliefs and i'm sure each and every one of you do some people think you just become a part of the dirt when you take that dirt nap you know but um your time here is valuable don't waste it on bad decisions, you know. Uh, uh, that's badass, you know, really. Um, you know what's fucked up is like uh, for two weeks before I got this case, I was walking to this industrial area, putting in job applications and having interviews. And I was, you know, snor I get a little snorted crank you know a little bump and go so my my spiel was pretty good and 
and I was just looking for a job because I knew if I stayed on the track I was on, I was going to go to jail. I didn't think I was going to be going to jail for, you know, for a 187, but, um, um, uh, let's see. Where's the thing? There it is. Uh, well, Richard, you're out now, brother. So you're that guy you wish you would have met. You know, you're that guy you wish you would have met. Um, be that guy to the guy you, you know, when you went to prison, when you were younger, looking for that dude, be that guy. Um, and so when I was in jail uh, in the juvenile tank, we used to get phone calls and and I was using my homegirl Cindy's phone. They didn't have cell phones back then. So I called Cindy and she's like, hey, man, I got all these people calling me. Tell me, you know, tell me uh, how they get a hold of you because they want to give you a job. And uh, thank you, Gypsy. This is, uh, what's I say? Yeah, 928 Shirt Co. Yeah, there you go. That's a 928 Shirt Co. Arizona made. <laughs> and this is a, this is a subscriber's brother has his shirt. So, you know, if I would have got a job, I still have it, uh, Del Toro. I am, I would like to get something a little closer. And uh, actually, the guy who makes these shirts, his brother, uh, is a is a is a member of the channel of that hard intense family good night joe you take care brother and uh so you know he has a line on a job i might get that's a little closer to home and pays better so but you know i'm building cabins in las vegas um it's a 90 mile trip to work it's a 10 hour day and it's a 90 mile ride home and when I get home, I'm very tired. So, what's up, Chew Dogs? Yeah. You know, when I get home, Chewy runs out to the gate. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's a good deal. I get to pay the bills, you know. I get to help pay the bills and uh, buy the food, and you know. I'm, you know, after doing 38 years, um, you think, uh, you know, fuck, fuck this and fuck that. And woo, woo, woo. I'm, but really, I'm just grateful to be out here. I'm out here with my wife. You know, we met when I was in prison, uh, 87, around there. And uh, so here we are, living a dream. I got a friend uh, like two miles away that was in prison with me. Um, you know, we've been friends for 40 years. And, you know, uh, he went to Folsom. He got a date, and they sent him a Folsom. Uh, uh, big man, I my bonus. I don't know if I can make it there, bro. To be honest with you, um, but I appreciate it, Gypsy. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. And then you're doing it the hard way. Yeah, I'm doing it the hard way, bro. Respect, brother. What is that? Looks like the monster mobile. <laughs> uh, clean money, dirty hands, for sure. Real gangsters go to work. Nowadays they do. Well, I do uh, gypsy. Um, uh, right, that's a coffin mobile. Yeah, it is. Hey, gypsy, uh, Mitch at hardintentions.com. Shoot me your phone number. I work. Uh, I'm going to take Monday off so I can take these dogs and get vaccinated. What's up, brother? Mitch at hardintentions.com is my email. Shoot me your phone number. Uh, what's up, Rick James, bitch? Uh, I found him from 10 years ago. Um, You know, he, I don't I appreciate the support. That's right. There it is. You guys, check that out. <laughs> Yeah. What's up, Akira? Hey, you guys, check that out. What's the website? 928 Shirko, put your, is that your website? Is that how we find you? Check him out. I heard he has uh, a lot of different uh, items for sale. Support, bro. Support the Hard Intentions family, man. Uh, his brother's trying to hook, plug me into a maintenance job. So it's a half hour closer. 
and the pace a little more in starting weight. So support him, you know what they say, support those who support you. So um, I got no problem bumping someone's business uh, on the channel, especially if they've been with us for a while, you know. That's what we do, especially in these hard-ass times. And then bullhead this year. I might. Uh, for you know, I might. I, I don't think I'll be selling T-shirts, but I might go. Look at that. Look at Lakira. Oh, man, Lakira, thank you so much. We love you, too. Big time. <laughs> thank you. Um, bullhead City. You know, I might go. My bike's kind of, uh, you can't miss my bike. It's an Indian. It's got customized fenders, uh, you know. So I might go. If I get, maybe I get my homeboy Gary to go too. He lives out in Topak. Uh, half the prison channel, John has relapsed or fell off dead for real. So you're doing great. My house got a bike. You're gone up hella in short time. Yeah. You know, it's been, uh, how long have I been out, babe? Six years? Uh, in September? Five, six, almost seven. You sure? Yeah, 17. We lived 18, in Costco for five. 20. Actually, yeah, we lived in Costco for five, and we've been here so uh, almost two years. So September this year will be seven years. Yeah. Six and a half years I've been out, so ain't that fucking something. <laughs> uh, ain't that fucking something? It is. Yeah. Did you see Lakira was on there? Yeah, Lakira. Yeah, there she is. Look, member for 36 months. Love you, Mission Adrian. Uh, hi. <laughs> you know, another thing, too. Thanks, you guys. Oh, we have a uh, lot of members, too. And, oh, Lake Water. You know, yeah, Lake Water's Thanks, on. you guys. Aw. Yeah. 36 months. That's what's happening. That's right. That's yeah, so cool, you that's guys. fucking family shit. Thanks there. for the support, always. Like, it's but, just. But Jason said, look, on. Jason, half the prison genre has relapsed or fell off dead for real. So you're doing great. Bought a house, got a bike. You're going up hella short time. <laughs> you know, that's cool shit. Yeah, uh, right, baby. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Chilean Gringo? What's up, brother? Yeah. Look here, said hi, beautiful. Hi. You know, it's just uh, it's been a long ride. Um, oh, that's so that's yeah, crazy. been Absolutely. seven years almost. So here's the deal: like, I can't be. I went through all that shit in a joint. And, I met some good friends in there. We had some good times occasionally, you know. It wasn't all doom and gloom until the end, the last part of prison, once they started fucking things up. And, you know, I have, I, well, I went to ride with Bowtie and I told him about my friend out here. And he goes, How long has it been since you've seen him? I said, Well, you know, he went back to Folsom in like 1987 and, or 86. And he goes, He stinks. He goes, Fuck, man. I go, what? He goes, I don't have any friends that I haven't seen in over 20 years that I'm still friends with. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, you know. But for us, you know, um, you know, you don't just in prison, you don't just make friends. Um, I've said it before, you know, like if you start associating with someone to get tight with someone and they're a dirtbag, they can get you killed. You could lose your life because you're associating with a piece of shit. So you learn how to judge people real well and they judge you and um, some guys you just, you click with and you drive with and, and, you know, like uh, we sit around a dorm for eight hours, you know, snorting crank and I'm tattooing on them and we're talking about our lives. And, um, you know, that was a thing, you know, and we did that. And, and uh, I mean, you know, guys mentor you without even knowing that they're mentoring you. Um, they teach you how to live. Uh, you know, they're your friends. They're your brothers. Um, you know, it's just, uh, that's how it is. So uh, five or 10 years can go by, 20 years can go by. Uh, they can transfer guys around the prison system and you hear about them and they send you a kite here and there. And, um, you know, and, and they're still your friends, no matter what, um, do or die, you know? And so I'm fortunate to have a couple of them guys out here in the world that, 
you know, we get to do things with it and we're, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I don't know, it just tells me that, you know, people in prison are a lot more solid than normal society out here. And not to say that you guys aren't normal, but if you're watching this channel, especially for a long term, you're not normal society. And normal society really to be a, uh, Mr. Uh, Oh, excellent. Excellent. Oh, uh, the wish should be thankful. What? Man, like he did. So that piece of extra show like you should. Well, you know, um, I did one face tattoo on a guy. Uh, he was uh, Ray Bone from Coco County. <laughs> Missing your sub podcast. Y'all mentioned I'm being well. Thank you for the opportunity to interview a while back. Thank you. And I hope it uh, was beneficial to you. Um, kind of sacrifice that men like you have to make. Um, you know, the biggest sacrifice you have to make is, uh, you know, when. Um, when other races or even your own race, uh, uh, you know, when, when you have to suck your balls up and, and go to the yard, uh, when the shit's going down, um, you have to do that. You have to, you have to stand up and be a fucking man. That's the biggest sacrifice guys have to make. And, and it doesn't matter what race you are. And, and in the end you realize, you know, it makes you a better man. You know, when you face that fear, um, you know, you're coming off lockdown after a fucking riot with another race. Or, you know, when you're in a chow hall and some guy just got stabbed and he's laying off to the side over here, leaking out, probably going to die. And you just keep walking up to get your tray and hope you get your tray and hope you get to eat it. Right. Um, that's a motherfucker. Um, you know, when the cops are going to shoot you because some there's a riot going on in the yard or uh, uh, was why harder for you in the prison? Yeah, it was. It wasn't as deadly, but it was harder. It was a lot more violent. Um, you know, when there's shit going on, I'm in prison because I want to be in prison. I'd like to see that video too, Matt. I, that's one video I would like you to forward to me. Um, so there's things going on in prison uh, on a daily basis. There's no escape. Uh, you live in a prison with, you know, two, three, four, five hundred or five thousand guys, a thousand guys. And they're all going to be there every day, every day, every day. Uh, the guys you work with are going to be there. The guys you see in the chow hall are going to be there. Uh, you know, the guy that shorted you on your fucking tray is going to be there. Um, you know, the guy that don't want to pay you for that dope sack you sold them is going to be there. Uh, you know, the guy that's going to rat on you because you didn't give him a fucking front on a $20 paper is going to be there. You know, the guy that will stab your fucking ass because you're the wrong color is going to be there. Um, and you, you know, the the doors crack and you step out and you go about your day like everything's normal. That's the biggest sacrifice you got to make, you know, bottom line. And because some guys can't do it and some guys check in. Um, yeah. Um, it's a motherfucker, man. Many words, many have ever spoken about what happened. Any word. I uh, just remember what happened did before you crawl. I did. I did speak about that. And uh, I, if you watch the channel, Benny, you might. Uh, so before I paroled, you know, I was, uh, I was in a program facility. That's before they had none. Don't get me wrong. That's before they started mixing this and Ys with GPs and calling program facilities. I was in a long-term offender program. Uh, they had some guys in from Pelican Bay on the yard, you know, so it was a pretty decent yard. And, uh, you know, there was shit going on, like 
drug debts and other shit. And there was things that power struggles going on with the other races. And so I went to church on Sunday. I went to mass. I can tell you why stories, but, uh, anyways, I went to mass, come back on the yard. And usually I would come in and tell the cop, you know, Hey, I want to check, you know, I want to go to my cell. I don't want to hang out on the fucking yard, you know? Uh, Ray Wolf Prince. I don't know Ray, Ray Wolf Prince. Don't know him, riders, more mechanic. Uh, and so they go, wait till unlock. So I thought that was kind of weird. So I was walking the yard. I got to a certain point. Uh, you know, riot kicked off. Uh, the blacks jumped on the whites. Um, they, they had girl gates tied open on the tiers. So it was a planned thing. Uh, they ran into cells on some guys and fucked them up pretty bad. I think it, one or two people died, like eight people got stabbed. Um, that was a week before I went home. That was the Sunday after Friday. I got told I'm going home. Sunday I had a riot. Um, I stood there. I'm like, what the fuck, you know? Black dudes are running by me. I'm obviously white. Uh, you know, I was going to make it through prison time. He doesn't appear to be in peace. He was in PC for a long time. Um, anyways, these black dudes, I was, you know, they were running right by me. Didn't touch me. Anyways, we were on lockdown for that for about a week, and I went home that next Friday from from a lockdown. Um, yeah, it was a fucked up deal. <laughs> um, I almost lost. They locked everyone on the yard up, put us in cages, and uh, they were bringing buses on the yard at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, yeah, it was a motherfucker. Easy. No, uh, es nuevo. I doubt it. California's, that was my clicker. Um, so, Manson was in 4A for a while in, in Old Folsom, and then he went to Vacaville to the psych programs, and then he was on the mainline in Vacaville for a while, which is a pretty relaxed prison. Um, that's where I met him, and then they rolled him up and sent him to a animal control in San Quentin and from animal control. He went to, once he got there, animal control, if God tells you I was in the shoe, big fucking deal. You're, you're in a single cell, uh, by yourself. No one can touch you. So Manson went to adjustment center, animal control in San Quentin. Then he went to, when they opened Corcoran shoe, he went over there and then he went to the PHU, uh, protective housing unit where he met Mike Thompson was probably sucking his, his wiener. And, uh, you know, and so he was protected for, um, there you go. Yeah. And also support 23 and one lockdown 23 and one support Josh. He's a good dude, man. Um, all right, Benny. Benny, man, it's, I got I can't picture your face, bro. I too with Richard and Ivan. Yeah, yeah, Richard, fucking rotten Richard. He's in Los Angeles. Whatever fuck ever happened to Ivan? Benny, man, I can't picture your face, bro. Uh, hey, Benny, my email is Mitch at heartintentions.com. Send me an email. Send me uh, send me your cell phone number or whatever I'll give you a call. You no know, single cells of best life. And Ivan paroled. Wow. Michael Thompson, the hardest inmate to ever suck Charlie Manson's fucking cock. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, Benny. Thank you. It's great. It's, yeah. Oh, thank you, bro. Thank you so much, Outlaw Josie Wales. Um, that was just that was just one small, you know. Yeah. Our RG, what's up? Everything's up, brother. Life is up. <laughs> um, 
So Ivan, God, he was dancing. You know, they're letting anyone out now. But Ivan was, you know, I got millions of dollars. It's big. I'm Russian. You know, he might have been Russian too. Um, let's see. Uh, lost me great phones. Trump gets on. Gets so many racks. This is getting better. That's right. I'm going to leave that up because we love Trump. But Ivan, uh, he had issues with this white chick that was a counselor in the long-term offender program. And he's like, man, she's fucking around with them black guys. And I'm like, who gives a fuck? You're in the program and get your fucking ass out of prison. Who cares what she's doing? She got fired for fucking around with black guys, I guess. I don't know. I didn't give a fuck. She wrote some good reports for me. So, yeah, but Ivan was a crazy motherfucker. He's just, you know, I'm going to, he goes, he used to watch American Pickers and he goes, I'm going to cruise around the country and find them old Indians like that. And I'm going to buy them all. I'm going to, I'm going to build some badass old Indians like that. You know, just, he was just living in this fucking fantasy because he'd been in prison his whole life like me, but he didn't, he didn't move past a certain point. He, but I'll tell you what, Ivan was, and, uh, that's in the writ on COVID. All right. So there he goes. Yeah. So one thing about Ivan, man, he was uh, he was one of them dense motherfuckers with one track mind, you know, like just like focus, like tunnel vision. He was down with the fucking law. I'll give him that. He was down for the law. He was good at it. He could buy writs like crazy, man, you know. But uh, so he got out on a writ. Wow. And I heard that COVID in San Quentin was pretty bad. Um, uh, that guy, is the toughest guy ever walked a prison yard. Yeah, he is. He's Wes Watson the, is the toughest guy. He's a legend in his own mind. He walked the toughest level two private prison yard in the country. <laughs> Turns out Wes Watson's a cocksucking fag, and he's a dope shooting piece of shit. Uh, shoots steroids and uh, does burpees. Yeah, big deal. Um, he never did time in California State Prison. Uh, he went from county jail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he went from county jail to the reception center to a private prison. Never did time. It might have came because when you get out, you got to come back. So he might have came back to a prison. I think he went to Alano, another private prison, California Pro from there. Never did time in a California prison. He's a fucking piece of shit. He's, you know, like, uh, I don't really care for these dropout channels and all shit. I don't really watch them, but I caught one one time. I said, Wes Watson exposed, so I watched it. And the guy had the paperwork where this guy did his time. He did not do any time in California State Prison. And like, But like he said in this video, um, uh, we're letting everyone out. The real was about Quentin's population causing his health. Oh, okay. Yeah, see? Guy's smart. Ivan was smart. But, man, he was fucking dense on some shit, man. He was funny, though. I liked him. He was fun to kick it with. He's a big old fucker, too. But, uh, yeah, Wes Watson got in the prison genre when no one else was doing it. No one called him on his shit. Uh, prisons were going through COVID. They couldn't use the phones. They couldn't get visits. They couldn't, you know, they definitely didn't have a lot of cell phones. Um, but, yeah, he's a fucking phony. He's a steroid taking freak about five foot tall. So his arms look like they're like this big, but really like this big because they're only this long. <laughs> yeah, his biceps are probably half as big as mine. But he's a millionaire. He brags about being a millionaire from YouTube. Um, I'm far from that. Uh, I'm like a hundred air, you know. <laughs> I think YouTube gave me a couple hundred bucks last month, whatever. But, uh, you know, he, he, the guy obviously uh to tell me Eddie Bunker. No, I didn't. That was before my time, bro. That guy, Eddie Bunker, I think he was a movie guy, got into movies. That was way before my time. I did know uh Bulldog Lad, Wayne Lad, I knew him, uh, who was friends with that guy. Um, but I never met the Eddie Bunker guy. That was before my day, you know. Um, yeah. But uh yeah, um, uh, let's see. Um, 
Wes Watson, obviously, uh, Josh cracked me up one day when he said he would be on his bucket list and walk to San Quentin Yard. Well, having said that, Josh, I mean, uh, Matt, speaking of Josh, um, I met someone through this channel, Eric. Hats off to you if you're watching my friend. I met him also at Arizona Bike Week, another YouTube uh, brother. At Bob, what's up? Yeah, yeah, he uh, he did do some good shit. I think he got into the Runaway Train. I saw that movie. He also got uh, he also got uh, Danny Trejo into the movies, you know. So which is good. Um, I forgot where I was going. Uh, oh, so anyway, I met Eric through our channel. He's a member of Black Sheep Motorcycle Club, which is a Christian biker club. And, uh, you know, he's been involved with the drugs. I don't know if he did much prison time or anything like that, but he was in heavy into drugs and, <clears throat> you know, ruined his life. Got his life back together, ruined it again, you know, drugs. Uh, he's a Christian man now and he's a biker and he's, uh, you know, he's always been a biker, but, um, they go into prisons. And so I saw him at Arizona bike week and it was cool to kick it with him. And, uh, so he texted me, Hey man, you want to go into Sentinel prison? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> so I filled out the questionnaire. Uh, I was a little late getting the info about my motorcycle, what type of motorcycle, what year license, all that shit. Um, I sent it to him. He goes, hopefully it's not too late and I'll let you know. They're trying to get me approved to go in with them uh, June 1st into Sentinel Prison in California, um, which, you know, oosh, man, thank you so much, bro. Thank you so much, brother. Great to see you on here with us, bro. Whack was on earlier. Uh, yeah, so, um, so I'll give you the history. Um, so in 76, around there, 77, uh, the Vagos did a motorcycle show in DVI prison. Um, they brought their bikes in the yard. Uh, my friend that lives close by here was uh, there. And, and so they, the, the club members came in with their bikes. There's pictures of it on the internet. You can see it. They're riding down the street by the prison uh, housing units and, it was in Easy Rider magazine as well. Thank you so much, Big Oos. Uh, anyways, uh, they had the bike show there. Foggles did that. I think that's the only bike show that was ever in DVI prison, Tracy. Um, uh, Hells Angels did some bike shows in San Quentin, several of them. Uh, was also an Easy Rider magazine, and, and not to get sidetracked, but I remember being in Preston in 1978, seven before I got out and had that Easy Rider magazine with that bike show at San Quentin. There were all these dudes standing there; they were tacked back, chest birds, and just you know, I was like, "Fuck, man!" These Mexican dudes had Pancho Villa tattooed on them, badass tattoos. I was like, "Fuck yeah," you know. But um, so they did, and then the very last bike show. And San Quentin was a Vago bike show. But these bike shows in San Quentin, they would have live bands. They'd have go-go dancers. Of course, they didn't get naked, but they have, like, bikini tops on. And and uh, thank you, Big Oos, big time. Uh, I just improved myself. Oh, I stepped down with always in and out. Uh, Ten rip, 15 and so on from the 70s. Um, he would always, what? Oh, always, uh, 10% of the Vietnam stories too. He was locked up in, and, and uh, that's right. So thank you brother for sharing that red dye. Um, so the last time I was in San Quentin, they had a bike show in Lower Yard on Veterans Day, and I go down there and saw the cops that worked there in San Quentin. And this guy's like, yeah, man, that's cool. These guys come in here with their bikes and shit. And, and I go, hey, check this out, dummy. This ain't cool. 
He says, why not? I go, them guys all work here. They're all cops. They're all prison guards. They're rubbing it in their face. Hey, look at my fucking motorcycle, blah, blah, blah. It's just like they were rubbing that shit in our faces. That's how I took it. You know, the, the motorcycle club started them bike shows for us. That wasn't just for their bike club brothers that happened to be them. Like, you know, I seen the poster of Punch Up I said, I want you, Gringo. That's right. That's right, Matthew. Uh, like, there might be two or three of their brothers in the prison, but there was 5,000 dudes in the prison. That's who they were doing a bike show for the whole prison. And so these cops, you know, that do a bike show on veterans, it's like, it's like, yeah, look what we got. You know, it's like rubbing it in our fucking face. And I walk back up to housing unit. The guy goes, well, I didn't realize that. And he walked back up too. But, um, and so now I guess uh, the Christian biker guys are taking their bikes into prison. And uh, yeah, so, and, you know, they're telling guys about Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. <laughs> yeah. But they're also sharing, you know, which I don't, I'm going to be a part of that also, you know, I'll share my faith with people. But I also want to, uh, for me, I want to let guys know, because there was a time when I was in prison, um, I was like, hey, you know, fuck it, I'm never getting out. I don't give a fuck. Uh, I'm going to do my art. I'm going to listen to music. I'm going to eat a decent meal every now and then. And if somebody puts a line with me, um, which fortunately no one did to cross that line, um, you know, I would have went there because I didn't think I was ever going to get out of prison. Um, for real. It was that bad. And uh, I guys had agreed with me. Um, so I want to let them guys know that might be thinking like that, that, hey, man, look, I was that guy. I was in your shoes. I have a life, you know. Um, I had to leave California to get it. But I, you know, my wife and I have a home. I have a little wood shop I'm putting together. Uh, you know, I have a life, ride motorcycles, and I'm coming in this prison right here to share that with you, you know, so um, that's, that's, I really hope they approve me um, so I can go in there and give some of them guys a little bit of hope, share a little bit of my story with them and give them some hope because, uh, you know, the worst thing you can do is take away hope from people. You take away someone's hope, that's a dangerous man. Uh, it is, Matthew. It's, it's rough, man. And that's part of being a man, you know. Uh, come on, Chewy. Come on, boy. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on. Get up here. Yeah, get up here and say hi. Get up here and say hi, boy. Look at the gray hairs in that guy. Yeah, Chewy, Chewy, look. Look, Chewy, right here. Yeah, Woohoo. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Every day I come home, this dude's at the gate waiting on me. He'll run out to the gate when he sees me. That's so awesome. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'll be like, hey, buddy, it's time for bed. He's in the, he's there. Like, I'm going to try to stay up. You've been working hard. Keep us pushing. Like, uh, work's rough, man, but it's good. I like it. Yeah, big old chewy dog. That's right. See, they love you, buddy. This dog right here is so loyal. I just, you know, hey, bud, I'm going to put you down, right? And nights that I don't put him in the bed with it, he sleeps right next to my side. It's amazing. That's another thing that I'm blessed with, you know. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, so I want to go into prison and... Uh, and let guys know there's a life out here. And uh, no matter how dark it looks, the miserable prison, I guess, put a certain thing for guys who want to do the right thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 uh, you know, I think it was around 2000. Well, I've seen the guys go home in 2011. Lifers started going home. Very few, one or two here and there. I mean, it was, a, it was an anomaly. It was weird because no one had gone home for 20 years or more. And so I started going to program. You know, programs give you a way to get away from the bullshit. Um, 
What's up, DJD? You know, I went to, I went to, uh, actually, I went to, I uh, pray to God he's out, man. Mondo from Visalia, if you're out, man. So I started going, I went to a drug program uh, in San Quentin. You do that Powerball tickets? Wow. Did somebody win? Did somebody win that tonight? <laughs> That'd be so bitching. Um, but I went to a drug program. Let's go through the motions, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I would write down the pertinent information that was applied to me. Because um, I learned a long time ago, you don't go to programs for the board. You do it for yourself. And I met Bobby. He was a mentor in a program. I forgot what they called the program. But, um, you know, um, Bobby was a black dude. Super cool. And he'd laugh. Yeah, hey, yeah, sure. Yeah, right. You know, like, call me on my shit, you know. Uh, I liked him. He was cool. Uh, good night, Jason. You have a good night. Sleep well, my friend. Um, and Bobby went out for surgery. Um, he was going to have his neck fused. And so they go through the front and pull out the disc, and then they fuse your neck and shit, and, and they nick his juggler vein and let him bleed to death. And um, that was a big loss. You know, you meet guys in their programs, you get to know their story. And in his case, he was a mentor in a program. Basically, he was a counselor in a program, even though he was a prisoner. Um, and you like him. He was a black dude. And so, uh, that's right. And so, the, the certain things cross racial lines, you know. Um, I liked him. Everybody liked Bobby. And so, when he died, we were heartbroken, man. Um, and they lied. They said he had a heart attack under anesthesia. And, see, and then we found out what happened. Yeah, it was fucked up. Great medical care in prison, right? So anyway, Mondo was in every, that program with me. And I was selling tobacco for stamps. I had like 800 books of stamps, man. I said, hey, Mondo, I got all these fucking stamps, bro. I told him what I was doing. And he goes, all right. You know, and then he goes, hey, look. Uh, one time. Let's see. That's right, John. Uh, things are things are good, bro. I just been wore out from work, and uh, so he goes, "Hey, hey, homie." Uh, he goes, "If you ever need somewhere to put them stamps, you're not allowed to have two books of stamps in prison. If you got any more than that? They could take them, and they did take a few from me. Um, buy like 800 books. Because if you ever need somewhere to stash those for a while, let me know. So I went over to sell. I go here." He goes, what's that? And it was a brick, you know. Uh, he held on to them stamps for me for like a month. Then one day I go, hey, I need them stamps, bro. He goes, cool. Gave them to me. They were all there. Mondo's a great dude, man. Uh, I, I pray to God he got out, you know, because he was a solid man. But, um, you know, we were doing the right thing because we wanted something to do that wasn't the normal shit that all the assholes do. And and we wanted something to do um, to not be faking our way through, you know? Some, we want to learn some shit. Wanna, and Mondo told me, hey, bro, I've been a, you know, he'd been a gangster his whole life. He got struck out on three strikes. He goes, bro, I got, a, I got kids out there and I'm done. And so I'm going to do these programs. Uh, basically, he was going to do the programs. He was going to, uh, uh, let's see. Big man's going to Jim Brown about doing football league at San Quentin with men's with parole dates, etc. What's that now? Good evening. Thank you. I'm about to be doing a football league at San Quentin with certain inmates with parole dates, etc. Well, that's awesome. Uh, wow. That blows me away. They had football. They had flag football when I was there. And they have a hardball league. They had basketball with outside teams coming to play the inmates. They had tennis even. Women on the yard playing tennis with inmates. So, uh, make a machine, Salim, 707. Good shit. Thank you. Thank you for going in there. <laughs> and let, let them guys know, man, that, you know, there's a life out here. You know? Yeah, so, um, you know, Matthew, um, 
It is rough. Like San Quentin's a pretty laid back, pussy ass prison. But um, in a in a in a real prison, like when I was uh, when I was in Lancaster, guys go, "Where are you going?" I go, "I'm going to Mass." That's the Catholic Church, you know. They go, "Why?" I go, "Cause that's what I do." <laughs> and uh, that was that. And ask me no stupid questions. Good night, Josie Wells. Uh, for everyone in Detroit, don't forget to check out the eclipse on Wednesday. I thought it was on Monday. So yeah, you know, um, when you're trying to do right, I mean, you just you, you know, and you're living on the yard with a thousand guys. Most of them are drug addicts. A lot of them think they're gangsters. Uh, some of them will kill you um, to prove a point. Um, it's not like it used to be. Um, it's it's kind of difficult to say, hey, you know, I'm not with that shit. Like, best thing I ever did was stop selling and using dope, you know, crank. And I used to snort crank and smoke weed and drink wine. When I quit doing that shit, best thing I ever did. Guys, we talking about that crap. I go, yeah, I don't use. And after like two, three, four, five, ten years, I'd be like, yeah, I don't fuck them. Fuck them. You know what I mean? They don't even come around. Yet. But uh, it's it's not easy, especially if you're young. I mean, I had done a lot of time by then. I had 19 years in when I got clean. I spent my last 19 years clean. So, but um, but if you're young, it's it's hard to say, hey, I'm not with that shit. Or why aren't you with that shit? You're young. You're in prison. You're doing time. What the fuck? You don't think like me? You don't want to be like us? No, I don't want to be like you, you fucking idiot. You know, begging money from my mom to pay some fucking guy for a shot of dope that didn't even get you high? Yeah, sure thing, pal. <laughs> That's a hard thing to do. Um, There's guys that can't do it out here on the streets, you know? So it's, uh, it's a motherfucker, man. It really is. Um... Yeah, but I'm out here in the world living. I'm living proof, you know, that you can keep your sanity to a point. <laughs> um, you can have some kind of normal normal thought process while you're in prison if you keep in touch with the world. And I'm not talking about TV. You read, you reach out to people. Um, you can keep in touch with reality uh, while you're in prison. And I mean reality just in general, you know, the reality of life, you know, not just, that's right, Will. Love you, brother. Um, yeah, I'm living proof. And then you can get out and keep yourself well-grounded and have a life. Um, hey, look, um, I would have been happy in a fucking travel trailer in a trailer park, you know, with a shed to park my bike in. Uh, you know, but uh, I have a home. I have my wife and our dogs and all that. So, I mean, um, the crowd doing all that probably got you a lot of respect. It's harder to get respect on the street. And you know, I was never really part of the crowd. Um, that's, a, that's a thing. And my bad thing is taste here. That's right. Uh, get that wood shop going and quit your freaking job, man. I'm working on the RRG. I really am. I'm building a humidor right now. I just, if I don't have all, I need a jointer and I need a good bandsaw. And a bandsaw I want costs like 1400 bucks. Uh, yeah. So, Matthew, um, if you're just a dude in prison, um, not being part of the crowds it's rough you know but um like when i went to prison there were bikers in prison guys from clubs guys that weren't in clubs and I, that's how i grew up so that's where i gravitated to and my whole term whenever i went to a prison as soon as i drive up i say hey, is there anybody here from san diego i say is there anybody here that's uh that's a this or that you know I'd, any bikers here guys in bike clubs uh yeah, I got you, bro. Uh, and there might be a guy who's uh, this or that, you know, like certain motorcycle clubs. Um, and then I gravitate to them. Hey, my name's Smiley, blah, blah, blah. I'm from Dago. I've been down this amount of time. And maybe they heard about me, maybe they haven't. Um, and that's who I would kick it with. And, and bikers in prison are 
few and far in between. We don't fuck with a crowd. And we don't fuck with a crowd out here. Um, and that's what got me through, I think, a lot of ways, you know. Um, yeah, I thought, I thought it was funny. But, yeah, you know, if you're, if you're not – and then I would have my homeboys with me, like when I got to CMC West, they, one of my little homies, they had to use them to do a two-on-one. I got my, I kept get guys from Dago. I said, hey, look, we're from San Diego. Fuck these dudes. Uh, we run our own program. We don't give a fuck with, you know. My brother, I think he might get a kick out of that. I mainly work, man. Some inmates over at Solano, his piece. They saw my, thank you, bro. Solano's in solid prison. It was, so. Have a good time and let them guys know, man, like uh, there's a life out here. Salim, thank you very much. Sports are cool. They cross racial boundaries. They show guys, hey, you know, everybody, we're all, they're just like me <laughs> in a lot of ways, you know. Um, not there, but I don't know, some smaller. <laughs> I got Spanish cedar for my humidors. Uh, books are a possibility. I'm going to have to get back on that. We love you, Will. Uh, you know, you can use a chainsaw mill. My friend has a six-foot-wide chainsaw mill in Placerville. Um, yeah, so I remember when I was in uh, CMC West, Level two gangsters. Yeah, we're running the fucking yard. It was so much dope on that yard. It was insane. I'd sit on bleachers and just watch everybody run around like chickens without heads. But I had a little homie there, Ricky. He had a problem with somebody. I said, hey, check this out. You don't have to ask nobody nothing. And his dad was in a motorcycle club. He was in a motorcycle club. And he decided to quit because he realized, you know, hey, it's more than I bargained for. But um, Ricky was a little slow, but he was a good kid. I said, if you got a problem with somebody, I mean, you're from Dago. Fuck these dudes. You don't need to ask nobody nothing. You can tell them, just go beat the fuck out of that dude. And so a uh, shot caller on the yard goes, hey, man, uh, did you tell Ricky, you know, that blah, blah, blah. I say, I said, I told Ricky, man, if he has a problem with somebody, deal with it. He said, I didn't need to ask nobody, no permission. He goes, hey, man, uh, you know, he obviously thought I was in a bike club, but which I never, you know, I don't put myself out there like that. But he said, you know, this, he mentioned the name of bike club. He goes, they don't run these, they don't run the prison. I said, uh, I'm not trying to run no prison and I'm not part of that, that club. I'm not a member of that club. I just went, okay. And then uh, later on when some dude owed me some money, some lame on the yard that was buying him and all his buddies weed and this and that. And then he got in debt and he couldn't pay his debt. Well, he owed me some money. And uh, I had my finger in that dude's face. He owed Ricky some money. I said, if you don't pay me, I'm going to kick your fucking teeth out. And that dude seen that. And they're, they, he's worried about his cash cow. And he came walking up the, the street towards me. And he goes, hey, smile, you got a minute? And I happened to be walking the track with two of my younger homeboys. And, uh, one dude ran up on him. He put his fists up. He goes, what do you want with my homeboy? <laughs> and that dude went, whoa, whoa, it's not like that. Yeah, so he learned. Um, yeah, I'm not running the fucking yard, but you ain't running us, you know. Um, if you gravitate towards men, and that's something I learned from my, from my older guys that I came around when I was younger. They've been through Trace, you know, so the fucking madness before I got there. That's what I learned from them. And so that's what I was trying to teach them kids, you know, be a fucking man and make your own decisions. And, uh, yeah, so that fucking lame learned. Um, you know, he learned. <laughs> uh, yeah, I ain't trying to run a fucking prison yard, but I am from San Diego and I'm a fucking biker and you ain't fucking running me. Or my little homeboys, you know. And uh, I had a little homeboy, Hooker, on the yard. He was a plumber. And I hadn't touched a weapon in years, man. And uh, I said, bring me some knives. I had like four or five knives on that yard. Them guys had no clue. To them, I just some lame be bopping around the yard. Um, yeah. 
It's a good thing they didn't fuck around because they would have found out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, hey, guys, 25000 That's because you guys have been following us from day one. You guys have told other guys about it. Other guys told other guys. Who told other guys. Who told other guys. Look, when we moved out here to Arizona, somebody drove up the street. We live on they gave me a peach tree to plant in my front yard. They've been watching my channel, him and his dad. They, and I'm like, wow, you know. We got friends up in Kingman. Uh, that's just a blessing, man. Support the shirt. Support those who, uh, who support you, man. Right. I am building a... Yep. You know, before I go, uh, Matthew, you know, like, like, I would tell motherfuckers I don't use dope, and I let it be known I don't use. So when the, when the problem was over dope, I was not around. I'm not participating. Um, but if the problem was racial, if, if we were being jumped on by uh, another race just because we're white, I was there. You got to be there for that. Um, you have to be there for that. Uh, thank you so much. Sheet truck. Thank you, bro. That's a name I haven't seen before. And that's what I'm talking about. I don't know how you found our channel, but thank you for coming on. You know? Yeah. So, you know, Matthew, it's, it's really not that difficult. Um, the hardest part is making the decision, you know? That you, I don't give a fuck what some dope fiend on the yard thinks about me. I don't care what some guy living in a bush shooting dope, uh, you know, recycling fucking soda cans so he can get a shot of fucking dope or smoke some crack. Uh, now he's in prison and he's got, yeah, I'm a gangster. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what that guy thinks about me. Um, really. And, and, you know, after you've been in prison long enough, you learn how to read people. So if you're, if you're, if they got ill intentions towards you, you'll know it. Then you just make your fucking move first and show them, hey, you know, fuck, fuck it. Be a man. <laughs> you know, it's like somebody, uh, you ever seen that thing on, on uh, Instagram? Be a man, the be a man mafia, be a man, <laughs> you know. Yeah, 10 speed gangsters, fuck them, dude. They're in prison too. I care. You have to make that decision that you don't care what them guys think about you because they're not going to bust a grape. They might roll up on you. <laughs> you know, they might roll up on you too deep and then you just beat their fucking ass because they don't know how to fight, most of them. The ones that know how to fight, they're on the same page as you. They think this shit's stupid. Um, they yeah, just have to be a man. You have to step up and say, hey, you know, fuck these dudes. I'm not with it. But, you know, like I said, um, you know, if you're being, if there's a, a racial problem on the yard involving the whites, you, you have to be there. Um, what's up, Lupe? You have to be there for that. Congrats. Salute, brother. I like that DNA thing. You have to be there for certain stuff, you know? And sometimes it's kind of fun, especially if there's no weapons involved. Or, yeah, yeah, well, men can't be women. We all know that, Jeannie. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, so, I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a trip looking back on it, you know? Because my friends that were in Tracy uh, dealing with all that shit, when I was in Preston, one of my friend's brothers was in Tracy, and it's like, dude, the white dudes had it bad there, man. They were getting stabbed and killed all the time. It was rough. And they were they were following their visitors out of the visiting room. Their visitors would follow your visitors out of the visiting room and kill your visitor. That's how fucking bad it was. So it's not like that now. He's got a, these guys got a free ride now because of shit like that that we dealt with, you know. But, um. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for making this channel what it is. Uh, I'm grateful. My wife's grateful. Um, 
I'm sorry I've been doing a lot, but I have been working my ass off and uh, building cabinets, you know. And, and uh, you know, I drive an hour and a half to work into Las Vegas, and, and uh, on that drive, sometimes I don't put the radio on, nothing. I just sit there and contemplate where I'm at in life, where I'm headed, what I have, what I didn't have, and, um, yeah, and I just thank uh, God above for what I've got, and I'm very grateful for all my friends, and that includes you guys. So thank you so much for the 25,000 subscribers, man. Thank you for rolling with us, um, buying our shirts, and just, you know, you guys are great, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, even the quiet guy. Because it makes people a monster from memory and scenery. It can make you a monster, bro. It can. It can, bro. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> well, you guys have helped us, bro. More than you know. Do it hard, Big Oose. You guys take care. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best to try to get on here. Um, thank you, Zach. Uh, we had some chance at life, Mitch. Yeah, don't waste it, man. Don't waste your life on bullshit. Good night, brother. Brian. Thank you, JP. You guys have a good night. I love you guys. For real. Boom, boom. Take care. And, uh. I'll be seeing you for real. Do it hard. Thank you. Awesome. 25,000. That's right. Rev Wolfhelm. Zach, good night. Who's Will? Good night, brother. Good night, Matthew. Bob, good night, brother. That's right. Good night, folks. We love you. you guys have a good Sunday. Get up Monday, kick that ass.